I make this look good. Are you not entertained? America's first competition talk show. You're in the hub. Good day to you. Coming to you live between the black and white version of Mr. Clean, Joel Aaron, here on the Hub Internet Show. Glad to have you aboard. Continuation of the immigration debate we had yesterday. We're having the immigration debate a little bit here again today. I, you know, here's the thing. Susan Lowndes is, uh, is, uh, is running in Nevada against Harry Reid right now. Harry Reid recently said that he wanted to deal with energy policy before he dealt with immigration policy. And we know, from a, for, we know for a fact that everybody apparently now wants to deal with immigration policy. Uh, we know this because Rasmussen came out with a poll that says Susan, who has said we're gonna, uh, you, you know, that I'm a, that that I am against this, uh, is up 52 percent to 43 percent of the polls right now. Now, of course, Rasmussen is Scott Rasmussen, who founded ESPN, and uh, ESPN dedicates every hour of their broadcast day to enhance to to promoting. Uh, com competition and competition is inherently capitalistic and inherently conservative, which means we can't trust that poll. <laughs> and that's my bottom line, Jared. You agree with me, right? Doesn't have really you, matter what they say about us. You haven't watched ESPN lately, have you? <laughs> Oh, they give they're, trophies they're, to everybody now. They're they definitely not. They're definitely not the most capitalist sports <laughs> network. I can tell you that right now. The you know the only policy that Harry Reid should be worried about is his retirement policy because that's the only one that's going to make any difference in his life anytime soon. Here you come. Well, I wonder, Harry, how does Tom. a loser like Harry Reid get voted in, in office in the first place? I mean, the guy has no charisma. He's not a good public speaker. He's not smart. He's a, a snake in the grass, a weasel. How in the world does someone like that get into office in the first place? Well, well, when he's your Lots snake in the grass, then you want him in <clears throat> office. I mean, let's let's be honest. I mean, if he's if he's if he comes to you and says, "I'm going to give you this," I'm going to give you the railway. Didn't he approve the railway yeah, from Nevada yeah, to yeah. California? When he's lining your pockets, that's why you vote for him. Yeah, and truth, Brian, it, it is proof positive that what happens in Vegas does not always stay. In Vegas. <laughs> and uh, I want to talk about New Jersey for a minute because this 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 story really cracked me up. There is a principal in New Jersey, a uh, Anthony Oncini, who is uh, a totalitarian at worst, at best, and uh, he is now uh, trying to ask parents. He sent an email to all the parents in this school in New Jersey just last week uh, asking them to ban all social networking use usage of the, from their students, from their from their sons and daughters, because it's a distraction, and because there is no, I will quote him here. Let me repeat this: there is absolutely, positively, no reason for any middle school student to be a part of a social networking site. None. From my omniscient perspective, at the right hand of God is the principal at Benjamin Franklin Middle School in Ridgeway. <laughs> Damon, agreed. I agree Agreed. with him. I agree really? absolutely. Yes. Also as, as a parent of three children, three young children. Particularly, I was going to ask you, what, what age is that middle school? middle school? I don't think there's a reason for, for a social networking site for a child of that age. Yeah. There's no a, reason. Is he a fascist? I can't think of any yes. reason. Yes. Is a he a fascist? Yes. yes. <laughs> That's my favorite word to throw around anyways. But. Now, I, I think it's obviously the, the parent's decision, but, but I, I applaud him for taking that stance. Absolutely. Well, yeah, but his stance, it, it, it's fine for him to take a stance for, for principals and all to mandate it. it is, it's the parent's decision, and if the parents want to let their kids on it, it's... Um, you know, it's completely up to them, and it's within their rights. And there's some irony that he's at Benjamin Franklin Middle <laughs> School, who invented the printing press, and I would think that Facebook falls into the modern-day printing press. <laughs> the whole idea that the computers are this holy grail to education is just garbage. In fact, if anything they do, they distract students from actually learning. They, they play these games they're supposed to teach them, but they don't really learn because they're playing the game, and they don't care about what, what they're learning. And I do... I don't have kids, but I do think that there is no legitimate reason for kid, younger kids to be on social Absolutely. networking sites. Absolutely. Serious topic here because I mean, speaking about technology in the classroom, they're trying to put technology in a whole different room right now. They are trying to add cameras, televised, uh, televised proceedings in the United States Supreme Court. Ah. The Senate Judiciary Committee right now is trying to put forth legislation that would require the Supreme Court to put cameras and, I guess, televise on, on C-SPAN, just like they do the congressional proceedings, uh, cameras in the Supreme Court. Good idea, bad idea. My bigger bad question is... Idea. Even, uh, bad idea. Tom, what do you say? Because this is, this is not entertainment. This is, this is deciding fates... Um, when, you, when you saw like in the OJ trial with, with uh, Judge Ito, how he totally lost control of that courtroom and that case, and that's the danger you could have when you make it a three-ring circus. These are not closed proceedings. 
Any citizen who can get there can go see them. And to have congressmen being a Republican and Democrat being so incredibly dishonest to tell people that, oh, these are open, these should be open proceedings, and by the have not having cameras, they're not open, they are lying to you. They're lying to you when they tell you they're not open because if you can get down there, you can go in, you can go see this. This is not, you know, an appropriate forum, not an appropriate place for cameras. I hate cameras in state court and, and everywhere else. They should not be there. But but the point that uh, Senator Patrick Leahy, Democrat from Vermont, chairman one of, of the Senate horrible, Judiciary horrible, Committee. corrupt people uh, out there. All right, he said this. He said, except for rare closed <laughs> sessions, the proceedings of Congress and its committees are open to the public and are carried live on cable, television, and radio. Why not have this also apply to the U.S. Supreme Court? My first thing is, hey, Dip, you serve a. a there but, there but, are three right, different right, purposes. Right, hold, you but, work but, in Congress. Look, different look, purpose for that the, body. The whole Tom? the whole point about these open proceedings and putting on C-SPAN is not about educating the public not about transparency, but it's about getting FaceTime, making quotes, and, and showing some reason for their job. All right, hold, hold, right, hold, 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 hold on. I can't take any more. All right, David, pull, pull up. <laughs> Listen, this is anachronistic. I mean, step into the 2000s, man. I mean, everything is televised. You're, we're talking about YouTube. Everything is, is televised today, and there is absolutely no legitimate reason other than we've always done it this way for the Supreme Court not to step into the 2000s. I mean, you, yes, it is is an open court, certainly anybody can go, but there are only like 27 seats yeah. to go see this. Except so some kid in Missouri who will never get to Washington, D.C. has no idea what happens in the Supreme Court today. Except for the original intent of the founding fathers, because they, they set up three distinct branches, and the, the fundamental reason, and this is why this blows my mind, that we've got senators trying to reach this far outside of their, outside of their distinct branch. The Judiciary commi Committee, uh, excuse me, the Judiciary Branch, the Executive, and the Legislative Branch are three distinct functions, have three distinct roles. The Legislative Branch serves is the House of the People and the Senate, which formerly before the 17th, represented the state legislatures. The judicial branch is supposed to be independent, is supposed to not be influenced by the cries of the mob, by the cries of the masses. This was one of the reasons why we set it up this way, because the founders were very concerned about a pure democracy, about creating a mob mentality because they saw through history I, yeah, I, that, it would, that it would go defunct. I, I, I don't know that... Well, I, I agree, sort of. I'm splitting the fence on this one because I... I agree with both of you. I think one, I'm not that opposed to cameras in the courtroom. I, I, they are doing a trial program with the appellate, the lower appellate courts, and I'm perfectly happy with them to try it in the appellate courts and see how it works and to work it out and then to come back to the Supreme Court later. I'm very happy with the Supreme Court being the last one to go. Yeah. What I do not like, though, is our congressmen and our senators and even our president telling the Supreme Court what they should do. The Supreme Court is, is designed to tell them whether or not they have broken the laws of the Constitution and, and that they should not be telling the Supreme Court how to do anything. Anything. Now, and, and here's, the, here's the real thing to keep to remember. I mean, this is very fundamental, but the legislative branch is an elected branch. The Supreme Court is not. There's a vested interest in why we need to be able to keep an eye on our legislators because we're ultimately responsible for them. The Supreme Court, well, not so much. I, I disagree with you totally. But you need to be more concerned about those who are not elected and, have, and serve a lifetime yeah. uh, uh, position. Those <clears> are the ones that you really want to see on television because there's no telling what they're doing behind supposedly closed doors. All Tom, but everybody can read their opinions, and honestly, you're not going to learn much of anything from debate anyways. I mean, are uh, you going to start Are you going to start going and putting cameras into their chambers and when they're talking to their, their law No, no, no. you're it's carrying way too the far. No, 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 and and no. furthermore, furthermore, I mean, if you disagree, uh, I, I, I mean, if you need a new legislative function in place, the legislature exists to create law. Well, and, 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 and the judicial branch exists to, to determine the constitutionality of two and, with the law. and if you They're have, great law, which and, of course, not been real good. And you do still, law court. you do still have the possibility that if there's Thanks corruption or there's problem with what the uh, Supreme Court justices are doing, you can do impeachment proceedings. So you, there is a way to put them in check if they're not doing their job the way they're supposed to be. Chains of the Constitution, Jefferson said. It's the chains. Time now. We'll see you tomorrow. Huh.